Good morning. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to day three of the virtual classroom. For some of you, even though it's Thursday, it's like Friday. For others of you, we get to do Friday tomorrow. And so you get to look forward to even more English in the virtual classroom. Sadly, yesterday we concluded our study of things fall apart. Your exit ticket yesterday was great for mastery, as you saw in the digital workflow that I know you check every single day. Those grades will appear in Power School tomorrow on Friday. Currently, the operations team is working on the quarter three grades, so I need to give them a little bit of time before the new quarter four grades can go in. But this is a reminder, everything you do is graded in the virtual classroom. And so you've had your attendance grade, and today might be the last day for that. You might have one tomorrow if you got a Schoology message from me. But all of this is building towards our collective quarter four grade so we can be successful. Today is the third day of the first, fourth quarter, but it's the first day away from the novel. So I thought we'd take a moment and pause, especially because the end of the week, and review how we read and annotate for claim. If you have any questions at all, just pause the video and send a text. Our numbers remain on the bottom of the screen. Before we do that though, set up your desk. You're gonna need your notebook, your reading and writing handbook, specifically open to page 11, and a writing utensil. I'll wait here while you gather your things. Welcome back. I wanna talk about yesterday. In going through the exit tickets, there was a clear trend and it was not citing evidence. And so we're gonna make sure we mind that gap so we don't slip, trip and fall any other time in the digital classroom. So for some of us, for the first time since August, we didn't put a single quote in yesterday's exit ticket. I'm going to assume this is a challenge because it's a new platform, but just in case it's not, I wanna remind you a few things. One, yesterday's rubric was the analysis rubric. And so if you did not have a quote, there was nothing to analyze, and then you're not going to like your score. Let's make sure we're always working to the best of our potential because we have the ability to be very successful as you've shown in physical school all year long. The larger issue here is making sure we understand why we use these quotes, especially when someone's not right there watching. The reason is that evidence from the book or evidence from other places makes your writing more credible. You could say it appeals to logos, perhaps, um, or maybe it builds some ethos. Um, maybe you use a quote and pathos is evoked. But what are any of these things that I'm saying? I don't know. Oh, man. It's probably on page 11 of the reading and writing handbook that you have with you because you set your desk up so you could check that out. And if you're still feeling confused, Miss Gifford wrote a wonderful video to guide you through these things that you should probably watch before doing the exit ticket for no reason in particular. Now, let's look at how your responses should have looked yesterday. And for that, I'd like to visit Landon. Landon, thanks for the help. Here is our exemplar. This is what he produced during yesterday's exit ticket. I highlighted his quotes, and right away, you notice that there's two of them. And if we go back to the gap, the challenge was actually that we were missing quotes. And so now, by Landon having quotes ready, we are good to go. Let's see how we use them. We're going to analyze specifically his first quote. So I've color-coded this to be more helpful. He has his claim, it's in orange, and it says, the relationship is that an individual should be able to communicate and agree with the community so that they can communicate and make things work out. Maintaining the balance is important because if one fails, they all do. One error can cause the downfall of the community as a whole. Then he has his quote, it's in yellow. Okonkwo's machete descended twice and the man's head lay beside his, unfor his uniform body. This quote shows Okonkwo acting selfishly, only worrying about himself as an individual instead of acting as a whole community. This is Landon's zoom out. His zoom in, the phrase, head lay beside Ellipse's body, this quote more deeply shows how Okonkwo's choice, how that was Okonkwo's choice himself and not much more of an agreed choice as a whole. Now, are there parts missing? Sure. Landon, where's your context for this quote? For your zoom in, why so many words, my friend? However, does he have all of the parts? And as seen highlighted here, absolutely. Did he finish the response on time on a new platform? 
he sure did. Is this a great example of what to do on the first day of a mastery exit ticket? I'd sure say so. So Landon, nice job. Thank you so much. However, he's not alone. There were a few other students who mastered this as well, and you should feel free to use them as a resource. So Landon, Abel, Deb, Zola, and Nashira, maybe send them a text to say, hey, nice job. Or before you submit your exit ticket today, you could ask them to look at it, send a text, send a screenshot, see if you're on the right track, because these individuals were just utter professionals. Now, let's do class today, learning from yesterday's mistakes. So for today's lesson, you'll need to review pages 11 to 14, argumentation, in your reading and writing handbook. We're going to set up our notebook, and we're going to title it, Taxing the Rich, question mark. Your focus is going to be claim and supporting evidence. And then I want you to divide your notebook into two columns. Column A, what is the author's claim? How is it supported? And column B, this is where you'll take notes on the claim and add any evidence in your Cornell notes. I recommend you pause the video here as you set up your notebook. Hi, we're back. While we're not necessarily diving into our next novel right now, we will be starting our next play, Macbeth, next week. So your notebook's going to be very important, and these are the habits we want to make sure we're maintaining. So thank you for doing that so we can be ready for class. When you click the seminar link, you'll see groups on the top of the page. And we really appreciate your continued flexibility. We saw a significant increase in responses, but now we're adding these groups that I just mentioned to make it run even smoother. So instead of being a class of 30 all trying to type, we've broken out into smaller groups. Here at four group, they're below. They're such great volunteers. Your job is to see your group, go to the page with your group on it, and then begin working right away. You should be doing this together. The text, in case you need it, from the do now is at the bottom of the document. So if at any point in time you need to pull a quote, just scroll down and highlight it and then scroll right back up. It's easy to do. You can always send me a text and I'll be jumping from all of the groups and all the different classes here to help if you need anything. We were successful yesterday when there was a lot of us all in one group. I'm thinking in smaller groups, we could be even more successful. So as a reminder, you wanna make sure you type done so that the next person knows that they can add on. This was a challenge when we had so many voices all trying to type at once. In these smaller groups, you should be able to figure it out a lot faster. So respond with done, then evaluate the person's response. Yesterday we had some people just kind of naming things, but we weren't connecting all the dots, and that showed up in your exit tickets as you had quotes that didn't necessarily align with what you were trying to talk about. So make sure that you're talking to each other and not just writing things down. If you see one of the pause signs, just stop. Someone said something really great. I wanna make sure we bring our attention right to it. Here's our workflow for today. You're at the end of the video. You're gonna do the do now. It is timed, you have 10 minutes. It is the reading that you will need for the seminar and then a question to get you ready. We have seminar where we'll be together and then you have the exit ticket. Ms. Gifford says hi, and oh, that's Zola right there. That's Zola from class. This is how she acts in physical class. So make sure, you know, you one, go to Ms. Gifford's video, and two, text hi to Zola. So we want to make sure she's here and working since she's one of our exemplary students from earlier in the class. Here's our schedule. Everything's waiting for you. I can't wait to see you in seminar.